you learn a little bit about the culture and the food and the taste but beyond that it is about your application how you apply different flavors and different you know ingredients and how you combine them right hi i am here today at a bar called sidecar which is located in delhi's gk2 and i'm here to interview somebody very interesting the person who not only owns this bar but is featured on international bar world hundreds most influential people and he is the only indian to have featured there he is currently india's top mixologist yangrup lama hello sir welcome to the print thank you very much for having me uh sir you began your journey from a small town mm -hmm. um in darjeeling mm -hmm. right so tell us what is it that you wanted to be when you were growing up so i'm sure this is not a profession back then that anybody knew actually that it could become a profession at all i think mm -hmm. for uh, specifically for small towns i think so would you please tell us so you know i was when i was a kid and i was i went to a boarding school back home mm -hmm. uh, i was very good in sports and i was always into sports okay and then i realized much later that that couldn't be the calling and mm. uh, i and i was a very average student so i couldn't be one of those bright stars in school mm -hmm. so i was always looking for option in terms of what could be the right career choice mm -hmm. for me and i think when i was in the 12th is when i discovered hotel management and i realized it didn't have chemistry physics bio and didn't have maths and i thought that this could be the course and the profession that i wanted to be so hotelier was the profession that i wanted to be mm -hmm. purely because i thought that practically i was good at whatever i did mm -hmm. uh, as a sports person or as a human being and therefore i could apply those practicality in the hotel profession botany was something that was more accidental for me so okay. hoteling uh, as in being a hotelier was definitely something that i thought and i pursued and i did my hotel school mm -hmm. but botany was not in my mind at all okay so how did the transfer so while you were studying or did did it happen you worked with hayat as well for mm -hmm. four years if i'm not wrong four and a half four years. and a half years yeah so like how did the transition become from then as somebody who went into again hotel management is again not something that uh, even i remember growing up when i was trying to figure out what to do it was even then not something that was very popular or let's mm. say the first even five choices for you know a middle class family to think of in mm. terms of okay where do i send my kid you know to study so i'm sure even with you that must have been something or did it take a lot of convincing your parents or is, were they convinced easily so as far as the hotel school is concerned it wasn't difficult to convince my parents because okay. i said hotel management and they said okay they were quite open that way in terms of backing me up okay but i didn't have any idea about botany not did they okay when i came to delhi and worked as as in joined the hyatt is when i was sent to the polo lounge which is the bar there um and initially i was you know working on the floor helping at the back area not mm -hmm. behind the bar mm -hmm. uh Six months down the line is when I actually got an opportunity to work behind the bar because the bartender over there was very good, and I went up to him and I said, "Look, I want to be a bartender like you." And that's when, after really convincing him over, you know, like two hours of conversation, he let me. He let me behind the bar the next day, and that was how it all started the journey. Uh, initially, it was very difficult for me also to explain it to my parents as in what I was doing. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I didn't tell them. I didn't tell them that I was working behind the bar or serving guests. All that they knew was that I'd done my hotel management, and I was working in a five-star hotel. So that was good enough, right? Uh, but a little later, when I think 1996, mm -hmm. when I became India's best bartender, that award is when I went home with that award, and they figured out that I was doing something that made a lot of you know that was sensible enough. Mm -hmm. Definitely in the field of cocktails and alcohol, you know. was something that could relate to and they were quite happy with the fact that there was a recognition happening mm. uh so i think the initial couple of years it was very difficult as in they couldn't relate to what i was doing right. but all that they knew was that i was working in a decent you know establishment mm. and i had a good job which was giving me recognition and also right. some kind of money for me to be stable in a city like delhi and mm. i think that was good enough for them to just kind of be happy with what i was doing Uh, the whole idea of bartending had already started, and I looked at myself more as a bartender, not as a hotelier. Mm -hmm. By the time I was two years into the hotel business, and uh, it stuck on my head very, very strongly. Right. <laughs> so you said 1996 is when your first award came in and the recognition came in. So, okay, could you tell us? Uh, actually, could you tell our audience? So, um, 
what does it involve what does this how does this recognition come about or is there a competition <laughs> is there somewhere you put your entry in how does that sort of work out so way back in 1996 there wasn't a competition there mm. weren't any botany competition it was purely through nomination mm. so there was not uh, there was something called the hotel and food service awards so it was okay. basically hotel awards uh -huh. the annual you know hotel awards and one of the category over, over there was the best bartender of the year okay. and i think that was the first year when it was introduced it was called the old okay. monk bartender of the year okay and luckily for me i was nominated mm -hmm. i was interviewed i went for the competition i also won the competition so i think i was quite lucky that way is to be able to you know get my entry into the first competition and also win it right. so that was the first one now of course you have quite a lot of competitions global competitions that is also you know here in india regional mm -hmm. most of them are led by international brands of alcohol and spirits companies and it gives you a great amount of recognition and also also a platform to you know pursue your career or give you recognition in terms of being a professional bartender could you tell us in your own words how would you describe the profession how would you describe what you do mm -hmm. because for us we see it from the other end we see it as a product when the drink yeah. the cocktail comes to our table that's what we see we don't see the process we don't see the amount of knowledge one requires the amount of i'm sure there must be things where you mix you don't mix certain things and mm. um, i understand that there are already recipes and you know tr tr since ever since history that you know this cocktail goes like this but i'm sure every every enterprise every bartender would like to create something that's their signature mm. drink so something more about that absolutely i think it requires a little bit of everything so whenever i talk about bartending as a profession and what it requires to be a bartender i think it's a combination of everything definitely it starts with knowledge right it requires knowledge of all the different kinds of spirits and alcohol that exists mm. not just in india but across the globe right it also requires a lot of good ideas about the technique of mixing drinks mm. you know there are definitely the do's and don'ts mm -hmm. that's very much there uh it requires a good know how about all the other ingredients that you use apart from alcohol right mm -hmm. so even that knowledge is very very important it is also about how creative you are and how passionate you are okay uh that is equally important because you know one is the recipe that you have the knowledge that you have second is the technique that you know but apart from that it is also application right where to apply mm. and you know the foundation the basic do's and don'ts are very much there but beyond that everything is purely upon the person's interest and his passion and his and his willingness to explore that idea it's like a food journey right mm -hmm. you learn the initial foundation so you learn how to cook you learn a little bit about the culture and the food and the taste but beyond that mm -hmm. it is about your application how you apply different flavors and different you know ingredients and how you combine them right that is how it works over here the other thing which is very very important in bartending which is very different from food or mm -hmm. cooking is the personality bartenders make great bars okay. and it's not just cocktail making right uh you know you might have a very good looking bar or a beautiful looking bar but mm -hmm. it's the personality of the bartender that makes the customer feel at home mm -hmm. so a lot has got to do with the skills and the personality of the bartender as well right somebody who is great when it comes to conversation somebody who's good with his flair with his style or uh, with his presence of mind behind the bar because you know this is front of the house yeah. uh you got to be very very you know creative at the at the same time you got to be very attentive you got to have the right body language mm -hmm. and you got to have that style right so if a customer is sitting here and you're working behind the bar and if the customer does not feel comfortable by the way he looks at you and you know with with the way you were working behind the bar he may not order a cocktail he might say maybe i don't trust this guy so much because he looks a little confused behind the bar right. therefore just let me have a glass of beer right? right so in bartending one of the key things apart from the knowledge the techniques uh the recipes is definitely the personality of the bartender and that's why you might have a lot of bartenders but there is only that one bartender who is your best friend right not all bartenders are your best friend right so mm. for a lot of good bars it's the bartender that that makes all the difference you mm. go to a beautiful bar day one because it's new it's beautiful everybody talks about it but do you still think that there is still a gap when it comes to a when people want to take up something related to you know a bar or even the you know the whole food and beverage industry uh you know do you think that there is a gap where people are probably not aware enough 
about let's say even something like bartending that they, not everybody may be very aware of okay you know what is the kind of skills i will need what is the kind of let's say investment i'll need to put in before i can come out the other thing is how do you think they do you think this what you just explained to us in terms of how a good bartender is why often people come back because they want to experience that uh, do you think it's there in india as much or do you think we are still yet to reach where this is a norm rather than something okay you know there are 30 bars but is this one bar where you would find like somebody who's engaging like that or is able to make you want to come back to experience it again so so answering your first question mm. uh yes there is still uh the doubt about the business of alcohol so right not every parent or not every young kid thinks about choosing a career in bartending because it's fairly new mm. also the fact that we were for the longest time we were not a country or our culture was not about eating and drinking out you know right. we would be more comfortable inviting guests over to our yeah. homes rather mm. than going to a bar or inviting them to a restaurant so culturally we were not there but now with globalization with travel i think that has also come of age so now people do meet up in restaurants you want to celebrate mm. birthday parties you go to restaurants and bars you don't do it at home so often mm -hmm. also it's much easier right and you can have multiple choices right so because of that change in the consumer consumer you know behavior there is a demand and there is a recognition for this profession as well so that change has started to happen answering your second question in terms of do you have too many bars which which is driven by a bartender not many mm -hmm. but in the last 5 years that interest has grown so now promoters of mm -hmm. bars people who have invested in the bar business mm -hmm. are looking to have a face for their bar so it is not just about opening a bar and hiring random people mm -hmm. now i think promoters of this business are also looking at people seriously looking at people who can drive their bar business right so you need a face just like you need a a chef to drive a restaurant business right. people are quite keen and in investing mm -hmm. in the skill to drive the business through that talent or the through that skill you know so that change has already started to happen mm -hmm. there are already a handful of bars where the bartender is the face now mm -hmm. and i think it's only going to get better with all this global recognition that sidecar has received mm -hmm. i think uh, we are getting noticed and as a culture i think we have tremendous amount to you know present to the world hmm. right so in terms of the variety that we have to offer through the cocktail space and the cocktail culture i think we have the talent mm -hmm. and we also have the offering with us right. all that we need to do is find the right medium mm. to reach out to the world and let them know what india has to offer do you think that um that aspect where it's considered a vice is now slowly thankfully moving away and that could be why uh, more people could be now interested in let's say trying out even a profession like this or maybe or do you think it's still restricted mostly to the bigger like spaces like let's say delhi so i was just you know thinking aloud in those terms that do you think that that needs to also sort of move away where we associate the moment we say alcohol we see it as okay somebody who drinks alcohol will do x number of bad things <laughs> instead of that it's it can just be social drinking that you know you don't have to over drink yourself to i don't know some sort of hangover i think mm. so along anything along those lines absolutely changing because couple of reasons so one is definitely like i said earlier there's a lot of travel there's a lot of awareness uh, you look at television nowadays and you see a lot of food shows you see a lot of you know cocktail shows bar shows and stuff like that uh you're connected to the world through your through your mobile mm. phone you see a lot of people going to interesting bars restaurants people put up different pictures so there's a lot of awareness mm. and there are some global brands and of course now even home grown brands where the focus is not drinking alcohol to get drunk the focus is purely about the experience right of a good sip right mm. and that is driving the way forward Right, so consumers are not coming to a bar or not sitting at home opening a very expensive bottle of alcohol just because he or she can afford to do that. Right. But they're also trying to figure out what is it that they're getting out of that out of that, that bottle, right? The liquid. Right. And people have preferences now. It's not that just because you want you're in a mood to drink alcohol, you just randomly pick up any bottle and drink. Right. People have the preferences. That's purely because it's driven by taste. It's mm -hmm. driven by experience. It's mm -hmm. driven by what you like as a person, right? So you have a choices. and there is tremendous amount of awareness of course in cities like delhi mumbai bangalore pune hyderabad i think we've come of age there mm. are global restaurants and bars now mm. you have a more multicultural you know consumerism as well 
but in tier 2 cities also or tier 3 cities also it is now getting better hmm. you know i would not say it's up there but it's getting better and people are more open the acceptance of alcohol as a product mm -hmm. is much better off people do know that okay now going to a bar or even when you're hosting your guests right for dinner you're not just opening up a bottle of expensive whiskey you know okay if this is the kind of food that i want to serve maybe i'll i'll serve some good wines or maybe i'll serve some good whiskey or or do some nice cocktails right so it is becoming you know, of that sort throughout lockdown mm -hmm. when we were shut right it's it's very interesting to see that i conducted enough online workshops okay. on bartending not for bartenders but for consumers so people okay. were connecting with me or the bar through our page through our social media and saying if we want to learn how to make cocktails at home right how to take this forward and then we would do one to one sessions we would do sessions in groups uh, different uh, groups would be quite keen to do cocktail workshops learn how to make cocktails at home learn the basics that goes on to show that there is interest it is not just about drinking it right. is purely about more of a of a social activity rather than just consume con consuming alcohol right so that change has definitely happened and it is just leading to a better experience of the whole uh, you know product that is known as alcohol for what do these two terms or how are they different a uh, uh, bartender and a mixologist <laughs> is there any difference what's the difference i think a lot of people would actually also want to know that this is this is a question that has been asked every time i have an interview <laughs> it's quite interesting the mixologist is a more modern term of a bartender okay. right so you know bartender is like i might call myself a bartender because i've been in this trade for 25 years now and i like the fact that oh, i am a bartender which means i like to go behind the bar right so different bartenders are different versions but i feel that the mixologist is a more modern name of a bartender right uh or sometimes the mixologist also kind kind of refers to himself as a mixologist once he or she starts to create his own signature drinks right right uh, or knows a little bit more than an amateur bartender when he becomes a pro more professional person mm -hmm. i think it's about elevating the designation that you have okay. but uh, honestly speaking uh, there isn't so much of a difference between a mixologist and a bartender i think it's what it's the term that is used as okay. a modern term um what would you suggest like what would be a suggestion to somebody like me who may want to try it out just for maybe my friends or family mm -hmm. and to somebody who aspires to be part of this business as a bartender so firstly to the younger bartenders or people who would like uh, to or aspire to be a professional bartender in the you know in the course of their career first is that you know it's a promising job mm -hmm. uh, and it's an interesting job what you need to know is are you a people's man because it requires you know it's it's purely about human dealing right right great cocktails wonderful great knowledge fantastic you have good technical know how all of those things are beautiful but at the end of the day you're dealing with a human being so you know inter interpersonal skills are very very important like i said earlier on as well the personality of the bartender is something that makes or breaks a bar So therefore if you are a people's man if you enjoy nice conversations if you enjoy being surrounded by people where you're fixing the drink mm. uh and you are like performing on stage i think all of those things if you are quite keen very nice go for it mm. what you need to keep in mind is no shortcuts mm. there are no shortcuts right. for any profession that you take up and most importantly dream big don't only think of being a you know you make a few cocktails you should be happy mm. also do not get carried away sometimes what happens is you know you're behind the bar and you become the rock star for the evening and you get carried right. away no you are a medium you're not the star the star is the guest who is on this side you are the medium to make him the star and the drinks and your technique and your profession is the medium to make the person the star if the guest is a star automatically you become a star right, right. so if the if the guest feel oh i am sitting in this wonderful bar where the button is a rock star till the time he feels that way then you are a rock star so these things should be kept in mind uh, and then to consumers there are many platforms you know at sidecar and as as well as in other bar because this is a bartender led bar mm -hmm. we do consumer workshops once a month okay. so people register and we teach them how to make cocktails you know it's right. a very fun oriented learning session uh, we do four cocktails we teach them the techniques of making a drink nothing too complex you know it could be as simple as if you have these few things in the kitchen we pick them up and this is how could you could make a great drink so the simplicity of making the drink we give them the basic knowledge i think what it does is it does not convert them into becoming professional bartenders what it does is it leads to more awareness and openness 
to knowing a little bit more about alcohol mm. just like you know you're open to learning food and exploring mm -hmm. food it's the same thing with beverages as well the the more you are aware of it you do not mind exploring it further right and that's the idea the idea is there's so much to explore yeah. uh, and one step at a time